what's good y'all welcome back to deck <laughs> okay that time it wasn't your fault that was completely my fault I because from last i just i was scared because the last time you laughed at me but we're Dude, back i'm sorry <laughs> we're back for part two of blink of an eye with uh what do, what's the, do i could just call you kyle dr johnny hopkins that's too long you, you, you call me kyle kyle okay. you call me whatever you want man Hey, look. Let's not say all this that. Is, this is this is this is your show, bro. <laughs> this is not I'll a show. Whatever you this want. is a YouTube channel. We are professional here. Oh my bad. Sorry. Let me straighten my tie. What? Why you got? Oh yeah, you did just get off work. That's right. Uh, bro, I don't wear a tie for work. Oh fuck, you don't. That was just a joke. <laughs> <laughs> that was a joke, bro. <laughs> Yo. All right. I hope y'all enjoyed the last uh, reaction we did to part one. Um, the video link will be down below again it's just it's just a it's just a link to fucking well, what was it what were we watching it on before for free uh we're watching i don't know dude we're watching on amazon now some some website but it'll be down there so y'all can watch it for free if y'all want um Yo, check it out on amazon bro yeah check it out on amazon amazon prime fucking amazing beautiful let's get into the video well and he said, uh, well, you're going to have to figure that out on your own. I don't know. I don't have no car. I don't have no core for you. I don't have no Welcome core for you. Welcome to one of the biggest single-day sporting events in the world. Is that really how he said it? Yeah. Speedway well, in North Carolina. My dad would say oil. He'd say so, Earl. Richard Petty tells me to go see Humpy Wheeler. Humpy is uh, Don't make fun of his name, bro. At the Charlotte yeah. Motor Speedway. Okay. Humpy Wheeler sends me to Dick Bayard, and Dick owned a race car. <laughs> <laughs> you tell me but not to be. I want to race a cup race. That's just and two very said, unfortunate well, names. If you can bring us some sponsorship, then you can race my car. And Humpy wound up um, figuring out a, a local business that would Humpy buy me a couple Dick. sets of tires so that I could drive Dick's car. <laughs> this is huge. I'm, I'm on the main stage now. <laughs> what up? <laughs> Are you good? Humpy and Dick. I'm sorry, I'm not good. That's just Yo. that was just really like you said, that was just really unfortunate that that was that was the name yeah. lineup. That, yep, was, yep. that was the name lineup. I've seen this before, dude, and I still laughed at it, man. Like, come on, that's hilarious. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now this is big. And I think I showed up as Daryl's little brother. Looking back through the field, Mike Waltrip, Daryl's brother, makes his first grand national start today. That was an interesting day too. Daryl was in the race. He's my brother. Richard uh, was in the race. I was living with him. And then you got the driver, Dale Earnhardt, whose name is The Intimidator. And Dale never backed down from anything. He was the toughest competitor in, in the history of NASCAR. And, and when I say tough, hard to race, hard to beat, and then if you wanted to get in a scrap after the race, you know, he would beat you up. He was, he was a badass. Oh, he was out here whooping ass too? Dude, it was the man. A two-bit me with a heart of gold, heart of gold won't save your soul. I'm telling you, he's just slapping. Right. But hey, he didn't care. Everyone here when he dumped Harry Labani at Bristol, man. I'm pretty sure this is Scott Rick, too, right? I don't know if this is. I think Phillip's there. Oh, shit. I was going to get back to him and just rattle him. I wasn't going to wreck him, but I got to him and he turned him around. Didn't mean to really turn around, meant to rattle his gauge over. This man quoted him before the clip popped up. <laughs> and the guy tries to cut you off, you stand your ground. A lot of times it, it comes out bad, but, uh, you know, a lot of times you win races, too. Well, Dale Earnhardt has gone out in front. It's the epitome of checkers. not been without records. incident here. Let's take a look at how he did it back in lap number 72. 
There you see Bodine in the five. He gets trapped on a slow <laughs> like, car. Bro, what? And as he gets Come trapped on a slow car, Earnhardt just drives <laughs> He's around. He's going dirt racing. Come that's on, a, bro. That's a what? good example of what Earnhardt will do to get in the lead in the race. Like, nobody else would have did that. Tire marks from Earnhardt on the side of Bodine's car. Well, Dale was really an aggressive race driver. The first time I ever remember hearing his name was back in the 70s. My brother was working at a little local racetrack and I was still driving. He said, if you ever want to hire a race driver, you got to hire this Dale Earnhardt. He was racing Butch Lindley last night. He come across the start finish line with two wheels up on the wall and won the race. He would drive that car and you, you never had to question that you wasn't getting 100% oh, yeah, out of it. Hmm. I remember a few run-ins with uh, Dale and Daryl, and uh, one that I remember probably as good as any was at Richmond. And here they come. Crowd's up and excited about this one. He's running out of time. Daryl Walker running out of time. Uh, I'm happy now. Uh, Walker by the inside. Side by side. Down to the inside. Oh! Four cars. There oh, it goes. They're four nine into the fence. Joe Rutman spins around. There's Dale Walker. Chevrolet and it is torn up. <laughs> yeah, that show was beat well, up. Wrecked me. <laughs> when we weren't friends, we wrecked a lot. Uh, you know, he would look over me, I'd look over him, look, you're not going to win. Well, you're not going to win. One of us <laughs> is going to get wrecked. That was one of our first finds. I never will forget Dale sitting in the car, all leaned over like he would, and uh, they were interviewing him. And who do you feel hit who on that last thing between you and Daryl? I just race him. I ain't going to, you know, me and Daryl's got to race week to week, and there ain't nothing to it and his mustache went real wide and smiled. And I think that's why they decided to find us, was that smile. They find him? When, when you saw <laughs> the black number three come up behind you, you knew that- The fuck did they find him for? You were gonna have to do something. You were gonna have to go faster Wait, than you, he was You going. just cut out that whole you sentence, have to whatever get out you just said. Way. Or oh, really? you're going to have to race yeah. him to keep your position. <laughs> I, I think that's where the name so Intimidator weird. came from. When you saw him come up in your rearview mirror, the intimidation factor became part of the sport. I can't tell you how many times I'd be racing him. I'd be, I'd be, you know, I'd, I'd finally, I'd finally get by him. I go, ha, ha, ha. I got by him. Then I look in the mirror and I'd say, "You idiot! What'd you do that for? Now he's behind you, and you know what's coming." Uh, Dare Waltrip's like everyone's is, goofy he had uncle. Big old bushy mustache and open <laughs> face helmet. He's, he's cheesy, man, a car, but has a certain way when another car is next to it, he could feel it on his face. He would get to a certain spot on another guy's car, and he feels the air inside the car change, and he could sense it and feel it. Then he would take advantage of whatever momentum he could pull out of it. I think Dale just turned on all his senses, not just his eyes. Now here's the helmet yeah. that we're talking about. Most of the drivers now run a full face helmet with a full chin bar, but Earnhardt is one of a few that prefers the open face helmet. Well, it's, there's pros and cons. Uh, Dale is convinced that the helmet, all right, the so helmet, helmet deal, the helmet. the helmet deal, you shouldn't be talking about the helmet deal. It's, it's the safest helmet in Winston Cup racing today. Well, let, but listen, you got to understand something. I, it, all I hear is, all oh, Earnhardt, he can see the wind. Now, you know you're a smart man. Ain't nobody can see the wind. If it's blowing in your face, you can't. Well, that's what I'm trying to tell you. That was my saying <laughs> that Dale could see air at these racetracks. He would know where that's the air cool would be saying, coming though. off of a car. Yeah. It was almost like he could see it, so I said he could see it. I've never been around someone who knew, who was so self-aware. He, he knew what was going on in the engine shop. He knew what was going on in the fab shop. He knew what was going on with the tire companies. He knew what was going on with the marketing companies. Um, I, I would say from a grand scale, he had, he had a, enough information, uh, insight to every aspect of the industry. The pit road is, is a big thing that you gotta remember. You run fast here and you don't think you're going that fast coming down pit road. You get in brakes and start sliding, it's gonna slide to the inside. He was the gravitational pull for pretty much everyone. And um, I don't think he ever asked for it. But there was a lot of times when he didn't like, he didn't want it. Everyone could relate to him, even though he was probably one of the biggest, the sport's biggest icons. 
every man on every crew has come out to the edge of pit lane to congratulate the man who has dominated everything there is to win in this sport. There's really only one Richard Petty. Richard Petty was the king. For some reason, Dale Earnhardt just seemed like, if you're gonna get to a scrap, I wanna have him on my side. And if I wanna have a beer, I wanna have it with Dale. He represented the guy who came out of a mill town, blue collar guy, had to survive, thrived, and never forgot who he was, how he got there. His style off the racetrack was, was very warm, very personable. Loved the outdoors. I know there's two Dale Earnhardt's, but he didn't want you knowing that. You know that he had a heart of gold and he cared about people. Yeah, that's a part that no one really many people did know saw. Well, the caring everyone part, and then yeah, everyone kind of just saw him as like the the rare glimpses this, you would get of him being like a like a like a really down to earth guy would uh, would be anytime he saw his son run, mm -hmm. like when it when his son won his first race or like you know anything anything he did in like the Bush series, like that's when like Dad Dale came out and like that's he, what it seemed like in the little clips I've seen. Yeah, he always had this like facade up of like he had to be like the the the, the you know made out of stone like, yeah he was the dark one that like you know he if he wasn't racing he was like in a shadow somewhere or something like that yeah. but out on the farm and i know he likes fishing a lot that man love fishing every clip. Fishing, fishing hunting i mean yeah fire he's just intensely competitive obviously everybody knows who he was on the track so you got the intimidator Ugh. versus Daryl's little brother. <laughs> Back at Charlotte Motor Speedway for the World 600. <laughs> Why are you doing something like this? this on this NASCAR circuit? Oh, As Mikey was great at making himself two, into a joke. He was in the best way. To lap me and I like my, it. my concentration, <laughs> my focus uh, wavered a bit. And because of what a great driver he was, he's like, I better watch Daryl's little brother. He's he's probably gonna slide up. And at the last minute, when I slid up, we're running 160 miles an hour, remember? But he's like pointing straight at me with his open face helmet and his bubble goggles, and it scared the shit out of me. <sighs> Man, I almost wrecked Dale Earnhardt. That's a that's that would be bad on many levels. And his warning to me was was focus. It wasn't, it wasn't like, you dumbass. It was, it was more of a lesson to me. That's what I took from it, was like, you better, you better figure this out. And good afternoon, everybody. I'm Bob Jenkins. Welcome to Darlington. This was the very first super speedway built for NASCAR racing back in 1950. Darlington is the toughest track on the circuit. Its nickname is the track too tough to tame. It's narrow, it's fast. It's I would assume slippery, it still has that nickname, right? Especially on a hot oh, yeah. September Labor Day weekend. I mean, you can't imagine how hot it gets in a car at Darlington. Now look at Michael Waltrip as he closes in on the leader, it's Sterling known as the, uh, throwback. He may be looking for the lead uh, here, no. coming out of turn number like two they, and down uh, the back stretch. They'll run older speeds. Michael Waltrip. I don't know if this was in the comment section somewhere or if this was in a video, but somewhere I either read or heard that it gets up to a hundred something degrees in these cars while they're racing. It can, it can get to like 120, 130 uh, degrees in the cars. It, it takes a lot of physical skill. What? Um, and it'd be hot outside? Cool, but yeah. Y'all got me fucked up. It, it takes a lot. Some, some drivers have like, uh, have like thrown like ice packs like they've sat on ice packs 
and then the ice melted and then the water started to burn them like in in an area that you don't want to be burnt that sounds so, horrible like, i i want to say that happened to austin dylan if i'm not like mistaken but yeah dude Holy life's shit. life's rough man <laughs> those cars are no joke god damn yeah passes sterling marlin and takes over the lead Let's... you think who's gonna win darlington dale earnhardt it's the track too tough to tame and who's tougher than dale earnhardt well that day i was we led the most laps over 200 laps out in front at darlington michael waltrip may be having some terminal problems here boy this will be a shame because he has been unbelievable today here at darlington he may have a flat tire he just it might be just a simple flat tire because he went up almost off the wall well that's what they're saying might be a problem they think he may have a tire going down that's why the car got awfully high and rushed the wall just a lap or so ago over there. i just sat there painfully waiting while davy allison and ricky rudd drove by and they they ran one two and i i finished third that day Damn. the way we had been running competitively oh it gets worse, i had man. began to feel like i belonged and i was at a point in my career where i said you know i i can do this i'm, I'm gonna win one of these races soon i know i am a win's coming Damn. What car just turned over? It's Michael. Fuck! No, oh, got trouble! That is Clint Boyer in the 29 car and the 99 of Michael Waltrip. The thing that I never liked is that these wrecks are not in Michael Waltrip's chronological second order. Spot in Davey and that's the one thing that's always point. irked me about How's that. Michael doing out there? <laughs> He's got to have a smile a mile wide. It's a small yeah, thing. That's right coming out of turn number four. Michael Waltrip, number 30. Looks like it's lost the cylinder. Bro, what's in the actual book? That's tough. Up until 1984, I'd won Only at everything. 1984. I, <laughs> I, I looked like I was the next Richard Petty when I didn't win. When I got to the Cup Series, that was a that was a real reality check for me. That I think I think I I needed understanding that you know it, it wasn't going to be a cakewalk. Michael Waltrip, a fine third place finish today. Mac, you kind of rolled the dice there at the end, and it didn't quite work out. Hey, Chuck. Are you going to fire him this week? <laughs> no way. I, I was never going to do it. We're going to be together a long time. He's a great guy and a great driver. Well, Michael, I'm glad to see all these firing rumors put to rest. You know, I've been fired about 600 Walter, times man. this week. Thrown out of my own ride. So everybody says. Of course, my car owner, Chuck Ryder, he's as, he's as solid as a rock, and I appreciate the world out of him. My girlfriend, Buffy, who I'm fixing to ask to marry me one of these days. Hey. 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 Hey, were you serious, Michael? Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. You were? Oh, wow, yeah. just like that. Truck. Okay. I just didn't know yeah. when to give it to I never did it before, so I didn't know how to do it. <laughs> Buffy, what about that? Give you a check. Well, shit. Hey, look, get it how you can. Hey, guys. What do we do now? I don't know what to do now. I first met Michael when I was in college, when I worked for the PR and merchandising licensing company that handled all of Dale's stuff, Michael's stuff. In fact, I lost my job because I started dating Michael. <laughs> wow. Not from, Dale didn't let me go, but the other guy that owned the company that with Dale or was his partner um, didn't seem to think that that would work, so. He had as much confidence as anybody that he would win a cup race and Bro, that's what I'm thinking about. Like, you've lost how many in a row? Dude, at that point, like, you're talking like... I'd be at the lowest of lows. Lowest five of five lowest or of six lows. years worth. Bro. Maybe seven years worth. And this is your career. Winning. And you still ain't gave up? Hey, I give no, bro. Man. He got my respect. Two. It's hard. I mean, I can remember sitting you know in a car in the infield of a racetrack at five in the morning 
just to beat traffic and, you know, him just being completely consumed with qualifying and if, if he was going to, you know, make the race. And, um, and, you know, I would be sitting there knowing that my fate, the, the whole mood of the whole weekend was going to be set based on qualifying. And that's just kind of how we lived our life, so. We were at Bristol, started in the back and made my way to the front. Number 30, Michael Walter has passed two or three cars up on the outside, so he's uh, pretty brave getting up there. And as I came off turn two. Back up front, L.D. Ottinger now getting chased. Bad, a bit. bad crash over in turn two. Michael Jeez. Walter has hit the wall hard. The car is upside down. God damn. You can see the car is really torn up. For some reason, I was the first dumbass to ever hit right where the Armco steel and concrete came together. I just clobbered yeah, that's into not there the anymore, concrete the and the car just <laughs> disintegrated. Or as Daryl would say in his interview, it disintegrated, which is what we called it in Kentucky, evidently. But anyway, the car blew up and <laughs> you just had the crowd to throw that in. Oh, yeah. silent and just it disintegrated. Knew they had seen I would have thought Michael Walter would have like been dead. Die after that. Yeah. Like, yeah, that I'm sure a lot of people thought run that, out man. To, to try to see what they could do. And when they this pulled the crazy. metal back. They literally just pulled that back and he's just chilling there. Wow. You know, what an unbelievable crash that your little brother might You got to think that's his, that's his brother. Yeah. Praise God, Benny's alive. Man. I was standing looking right at it and, and I couldn't move. I mean, I just froze. I, I never seen anything like that in my life. Uh, the car just disintegrated, and I knew he was in it. No, I, I thought he was. <laughs> I knew he, he was in it. He, he didn't say <laughs> disintegrated. The car is gone. Everything's gone, and the roll cage is all bowed up. My, I looked at him. He looked up at me and winked. So, mom, dad, he's a Walter. He, he's got a pretty hard head. <laughs> I, I was still That's sitting beautiful. in my seat. There was no steering wheel in front of me. It was over there somewhere, and there was no floor a floorboard under me. My feet were on the track. What? But I appeared to be okay. Yeah, at least you appeared piece. so. <laughs> when they got there, Man I looked untouched because I hadn't hit my head. I just got my breath back. And so, you know, I'm like, I'm fine. So I get out of the car and uh, they take me to the infield care center and we get to the infield care center. We get to the infield care center and one of the first people there was, was Dale. Um, my brother came, you know, and, 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 and Dale was there. And uh, and um, these are tears of joy. This makes me so happy to remember. But uh, he comes in and says, boy, remember this is a guy a couple years ago that tried to straighten me out and he came in there and he looked at me and just shook his head and he said, you're one tough son of a bitch, I'll tell you that. <laughs> and turned around and walked out. Yo! <laughs> and I was, and everybody in there laughed and uh, and so the reason why I'm crying is because, you know, obviously I am one tough son of a bitch, first of all, but, but secondly, <laughs> it's just, it was so awesome that we'd come from the point where the, the, the toughest driver in NASCAR who had to straighten out Dale's little brother, now all of a sudden has called me a tough son of a bitch. And so... When uh, my buddies come in, they let, started letting people in. They're like, you all right? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. I said, guess what, y'all? Dale Earnhardt said, I'm a tough son of a bitch. I'll take that. <laughs> Yo, you can tell that shit made her happy. I met made Michael his day. in the late 80s during that process when I was a sports writer. And I would talk to Dale, and he would, he would talk about the tire at Richmond is so bad. And I'm talking about 
talking about a Dover race and, you know, and the aerodynamics there and such and such there and torque in my engine, like that's how he would talk about it. You talk to Michael about the Dover race and he would go, they got a really nice crab shack there. I really like to go get crabs there. And I really like <laughs> to go do this. Fire, and like his, I think he got the right idea. Outlook at that's, things were, I mean, were different. Bro, that's how I feel. That didn't make him any less intense as a race car driver. His life was around many more things. So people didn't take him as serious as they took other drivers because Michael was fun-loving Michael. I think this is a good place to stop this video. All right. We've been going for about a solid 25. I think that's a yeah. solid amount of time. Um, yeah. Dude, this man's story. The whole, I didn't even know all this shit happened. Exactly, dude. Like I said, it's a it's another like look into a story that you've heard a million times. And like by he, now, and like you said, and, hearing his shit just like makes everything make sense and just makes it sound even more. Yeah, boring. it's like a missing piece to it to a big puzzle. Yeah, and it, it's it's kind of and like everything gets like. It, I swear, dude, this is a, it's a tragedy, man. Like, it, that's what it is. Like, the yeah. whole story is a tragedy, but it, that's what it sounds like. It sounds like a story. Yeah. Except it's, it's real life and it really happened. And, and that's some crazy ass shit to think. Like, this is just one of the things that has, like, integrated, like, a lot of NASCAR fans. Like, it's brought so much, like, storytelling to it. And like, and that that doesn't even push on the fact of like, yeah, you have Earnhardt, Earnhardt Jr., Michael Waltrip, you know, Richard Childress, Daryl Waltrip, everyone like entangled in the whole story, but it doesn't even like scratch the surface of like the Jeff Gordon Dale Earnhardt rivalry in the '90s, mm -hmm. and like you know everything that happened, everything that ended up playing out after Dale's death with like the rise of Jimmy Johnson, and uh, th there's just so many layers that have been stacked on top of each other that are integrated with each other in nascar that like it's a very um like ingrown thing like it like it, it's 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 a lot of storytelling yeah and it's cool that it's it's the truth too but it's being like, told it, well it's being told yeah really well i'm understanding it for being no so i mean i think it's being told pretty fucking well <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh it's it's really nice that like this story is coming like came out like last year i mean everyone's known the story yeah. but like it's the fact that like this side came out like last year and not like everything came out in like 2001 when it happened because the camera quality wasn't that good and yeah, stuff pretty, like that so like yeah. it's it's nice to see like this story just keep even you know 19 20 years later still being like you know brought up and like remembered the way it is so yeah, and it's, like it's, just it's before, cool um like just before the video posted yesterday uh i got a comment and it was like can you react to this i haven't watched it yet and then like people are saying oh i'm glad you reacted to this like i haven't even seen it yet so even people that are like into it haven't even seen the movie yet so this is yeah cool, like you know we get to all watch it together and and you get to see my reaction as we go along but i hope you guys enjoyed the video like comment subscribe i'll see y'all in the next one i love y'all peace they wanna fall away like i was down bad i was stuck in the mud that nigga didn't clean up louis v on the so so